Okay, even this uh, morning, I just want to continue on the same topic, uh, spirit-empowered life. Uh, this is what God wants to do through our church. This is what I believe God wants to do through every believer who is here. Okay? So it's not just a word for a week or word for a day. It's something for which God is preparing us. That's, that's how I see it. Amen? And God is building our lives. And uh, see, one of the blessings that uh, God has given us as we met the Lord you know, um, in salvation is God has called each and everyone to live a life just like him, like Jesus. How many of you, you know, believe that you are called to live a life just like Jesus? Do you believe that? Amen? Just like Jesus. This is his heart's desire. This is his prayer. I mean, it is for this reason that he came down. It is for this reason he went to the cross. Right? And it's, it's, it's for this reason that he has done everything for us. So that we will live like Jesus. The another way of saying the spirit empowered life is living like Jesus. Just the way that he lived, he talked, he related with people, he overcame oppositions, he lived to the purpose for which his father sent him. This is his heart towards the church. And this is what he taught his disciples. See, when Jesus came and when he, you know, got to the place now that he had to come to the public to preach, to teach, and to heal, and then to go to the cross. The first thing that he did is gathered disciples. He called them as how he has called you and me. And when we look at the kind of people that he had called, it really surprises us, right? At that point, nobody would have known you know, it is for this purpose that he is calling me. I do not know. Peter would not have known. John would not have known. Matthew would not have known. It is for this purpose that he is calling them. But they, they, they obeyed to God's leading. I believe it was God's leading. Right? It was God's guidance. They obeyed to the call and they started to follow Jesus. The three and a half years that they stayed with Jesus, what did they do? They learned. They learned. Amen? And he did not conduct a, you know, a course. He lived with them. He lived with them. That's why these guys, they left everything and started to live with Jesus. They watched him do everything. And Jesus wanted that. You know, that's why he trained them. Because he knew there will come a time that he's going to leave. And these fellows, you know, these people later were called as now disciples, then apostles, are going to be the ones who are going to take the gospel to the entire world. In one sense, in place of Jesus, they are going to live and show forth to the world about the life in the kingdom of God. They did not know that at that time. But he called them. So he, taught, he started to teach them everything. They learned from Jesus. And uh, when it was time for Jesus to leave. It was time for Jesus to leave. Then Jesus started to talk to them. Because the moment he started to talk to them about his departure, they started to get scared. They would have thought, what is the purpose for us to follow you know, this man for three and a half months? What is the purpose? We left everything and came. Jesus said, no, there is a greater purpose. And they might have said, when you were there, we were able to do it. Now you're telling you are going and how it is possible. And he said, that's the reason I'm going I'm sending the 
Holy Spirit. Amen. In my place, the Father is going to give you the Holy Spirit. You may say, you know, like Jesus, you are telling, live like Jesus. We are going to show forth, you know, uh, to the world uh, what it is to live like Jesus and how it is connected to the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you, Jesus is part of the triune God. But when he came down to live and show forth to you and me as how to live, he did not come with that power and authority. He came so that you and I will see him and understand that he completely depended upon the Holy Spirit. If you read in John chapter, Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 15, and Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to be so now for thus it is fulfilling for uh, you know, it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open and he saw the Spirit of God descend upon him. That's the first experience. Then chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness. What does it mean? From that moment, who led Jesus? The Holy Spirit. He got filled with the Holy Spirit from that moment. And, and again, we can read in Luke chapter 4, verse 1. And Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit, led by the Spirit. Amen. In Luke chapter 4, Verse 14, then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And then you know what happened. Right? He started to preach. He started to teach. He healed people. He went about doing good things. All these things he did led by the Holy Spirit. And he did not do anything without the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? That's the same thing he's teaching his disciples. This is what we saw last week. In the book of Acts chapter 1. Now it's time for him to leave. And he said, don't go. Wait. Because already in Matthew chapter 28, from verse 18 you read, they have been commissioned to do. Men, do something. You know about it, right? Go and Make disciples. So they've been already commissioned. The purpose has been given. Right? If only they would have known this purpose, I believe they would have, you know, even would have stayed near the cross. But at that point, he did not. Because he had to go to the cross. He has to win the victory over death. Then come back. With that authority which he has received, now he is sending his disciples. So, after he came back as the resurrected Lord, the first thing that he told them is, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. So you go. Right? You go. I want to tell you this morning, this, this commission, okay, this a commandment is not just for the apostles. It's for everybody who makes up a decision to follow Jesus. Are you listening? It's not just for pastors. It's not just for people who are in the full-time ministry. It's for the entire church. So, when he said wait, then they waited and the Holy Spirit came upon them and then they started to go and live to that purpose. Are you listening? Amen? So you need to understand here, when Jesus commissioned, it's not just for the disciples, it's for the every believer. So even this morning, you are seated here and this is the ministry that God has placed upon you. Whether it's man or woman, Boy or a girl, 
whatever age you might be if you are following jesus the very purpose for which you have been called is for this to show forth jesus to the world amen so for that with human strength it is not possible the same thing what he told the disciples is he has told you and me you need the holy spirit without the holy spirit it's not possible to live like jesus is it possible no way he was sinless he was blameless he lived a perfect life but we are living in a world which is surrounded by 200% temptation right the moment you step out there is temptation devil brings everything to make you do fall some no need to even get out of the church inside the church even while listening to the sermon they open their mobile there is temptation right so to live this life life of serving christ men you need the holy spirit and god has given us the holy spirit right and god has given us the purpose so what we need to do we need to live to that purpose if you give a job to a carpenter you without giving him any instrument you give him just the wood and tell him to go and make a carp- make a table will he be able to make it you need to give what instruments right whatever that's needed that's the same thing god has given you and me he has given us the holy spirit not to just to keep inside and feel soothing and comfortable yesu tetrugar not to just sit in the comfort and i am some places i wonder they say we are just sitting in the presence of god there is a meeting like that for four hours in some places just to sit in the presence of god i do not know for what he has given you the holy spirit is given you the holy spirit for what to 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 live a spirit filled life and now we are even talking one step ahead god has given you a ministry to live a what ministry to live what kind of ministry spirit filled because because jesus did ministry spirit filled so you and i we cannot do ministry without the holy spirit don't look at me when i talk about ministry god has called you for ministry amen you are serving god every believer every believer without the holy spirit it is not possible it's not possible so according to the new new testament according to the new covenant everybody is a priest do you know that amen but still there is a pastor but everybody is a priest everybody what a privilege that god has given us if it is old covenant right you and i we cannot enter in we cannot say just i feel the as she said no i felt the presence of god kalle irundu kondruvaanga nammala la what you are talking <laughs> you mean to say you went into the presence of god nobody only the high priest but for you and for me because of the blood of jesus amen we have the boldness in hebrews we read we have the boldness to enter into the presence of god and we carry the presence of god if you are a follower of jesus you carry the presence of god you are a spirit filled person do you believe that first amen amen etrin per viswasikringa ninga vandu aavinal nirappatta irukringa spirit filled enna okay innum bayanpaduvaangala how many of you believe that you are anointed you are and if you have christ christ means anointed one if you have christ in you you are anointed perumapattu porudhu solla and dhairyam onnu irukanum ungal and vishwasam irukanum you are anointed god has given you a spirit filled ministry to go into the world and preach the gospel this is what he taught them you know in john chapter 14 he taught them hey i am not going to be there 
abadiya no 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 need for you to worry you know the holy spirit will teach you the holy spirit will guide you amen the holy spirit will empower you they believed it and the moment they received they started to preach the gospel you know what happened in the book of acts are you listening you know what happened right and even at the very beginning they were a very organized church do you know that they were very organized there was no confusion but as they started to grow epume prashna apada aarambikum right as they started to grow going to different places they had to face more challenges now in different places in different context and that's when confusion started to come in and that's how he it came even in churches to which paul has to write constantly purida he has given you the spirit to empower you and 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 uh, in through the spirit he has given you what all the equipment that you need the ability that you need which we call it as the gifts of the spirit we call it what if you have the spirit you have the gifts of the spirit amen paul had to talk to these people here in 1 corinthians 12 You know why? Because they did not have a proper understanding about it. They did not have knowledge about it. So they were doing it wrong. And because of them doing it wrong, please understand, some new followers does not want that. Did you get it? Vortan tappu pannadunala, inorthan eppadi aayidunu ayyayyo adu enakku vendave? the prachneya vana that's a problem too are you listening because the problem here is in the corinthian church you know they had the holy spirit they had the gifts of the spirit operate through them but they did it in a wrong way there were people who prioritized only certain things like speaking in tongues so the other people did not have any understanding of the other gifts and they started to only major on those thing right and started confusion over there so paul had to write chapter 12 chapter 13 and chapter 14 to bring clarity here and that's how he starts now concerning spiritual gifts chapter 12 verse 1 brethren i do not want you to be ignorant i don't want you to be ignorant you're saying you need to know this because this is a weapon that god has given you man without that you cannot be effective in the great commission the life that god has given you okay in this place i want to bring a clarity it's not about just being in the ministry even for your day to day life this helps you amen in the old testament you know when the temple was built you know skill, skillful people were chosen it says the spirit of god came upon them right they were spirit filled those people were chosen to build all right so before you need to you know just um you know put this to only to a, a particular place of your life i want to tell you it is for your entirety for your whole life we cannot separate it as secular spiritual even for your job even for your business god wants you to be effective through that god wants you to show forth christ through your life amen so what do you need the holy spirit the gifts of the spirit and another thing i want to make it clear here if you read these chapters 13 12 13 and 14 see he's talking about the gifts of the spirit then he talks about love then he talks about you know the heavenly language about prophecy and uh, praying in tongues in chapter 14 in all these things you will see constantly he will speak about one thing you know what he brought this clarity to the church first it says you are the body of christ amen so in a body there are many parts 
So likewise, you are a part in the body of Christ. So the entire body, if it has to function properly, there should be unity. There should be oneness of spirit. There should be one understanding. Clear one understanding. Every part need to agree. Then only it will function properly. Are you listening? Amen? If you read further in chapter 12, I'll read, let, let me read verse 2. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to those dumb idols however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed and no one can say that Jesus is not accepted by the Holy Spirit. Verse 4. There are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries. Today we are going to just talk about the gifts, okay? In the church God has given gifts, ministries, you know, there are ministries, uh, there are talents which God has given for what purpose? I will tell you. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God works in all. Verse 7, you might ask, what is the purpose, Pastor? What is the purpose of me? You are telling, I am a believer, then there is a gift in me. What is the purpose? Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Say all. Amen. Right? God has put you in this body and you are a part and every part in the body is important. Right? He talks about that. I don't want to talk about that. Okay? It says even the least, you know, if, 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 if the least or the weak part, we give so much importance. To care for it. So every part, every person in the body of Christ is important. And he says, every person is being filled with what? The gifts. The gift of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. At least there is one gift that's been given to you. If you read further, that's what you will understand. And for what purpose that gift has been given to you? For the profit of all. Are you listening? What is the purpose? Is for the profit of? Yes. Gifts are other oriented. Not self oriented. The moment, you know, if I don't have this understanding, that's when I don't want to be part of this group. I am gifted, I'll go out. I'll do, hey, the gift has been given to you so that you will be a blessing to this body. There is somebody who is here, needs your ministry. You know, your prayer, your words, your counsel. Somebody here. And that's why God has gifted you. Every believer is gifted. Every believer has a gift. Are you listening? Amen? And when Paul talks about, you know, this part of functioning as a body... I want you to understand when he, when he, 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 he mentions about some more gifts in, in, in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10 it's there. Ephesians 4, 11. We are not going to talk about it today. Today's sermon is just for one purpose. So that we will desire. We will believe and desire. See Ephesians 4, 11 talks about that. Romans 12, 6 to 8. Other gifts, help, administration, all those things are mentioned there. All these giftings have been given to the body for the benefit of the body. Are you listening? So as a believer, you know, you need to understand this. If I don't believe it, if I don't use that gift properly, it is going to affect the body. That will affect the body. Right? So the body will not function properly. Then how can you say, Churchill, there is no problem. <laughs> you know how you must say, I have no problem. It's easy to say, today the worship is not good, the worship 
leader maybe i don't know what's the problem or the pastor i think he did not prepare well that's the problem or you might say i don't know what happened this year last year it was okay this year we need to ask god lord what is the problem with us with me with us are we functioning properly are you listening amen if you are a body you are a body for 365 days 247 not just for sundays not just for sundays so you cannot think yourself like i am a good member of the church no you are not called to be just a good member god wants you to be a active member then only the body can function well and that is the reason he has called you he has anointed you yeah you he has brought you into this church it's for a purpose you have a part to play and with your own strength it is not possible so that he has given his spirit nammala nambi kuduthirukkar and the giftings all the gifts he has given you from verse 8 if you read for the one from verse 7 but the manifestation of the spirit what is the meaning of manifestation yeah it does something it's action word when we say hey don't manifest like this tamil la nalla irukum alakalikirathu illa kettavi adha alakalikum nallavi veli varum it has to come god has given you that good spirit do you believe that right it has to and 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 what are the gifts for the one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit to another the word of knowledge through the spirit no part of man being played here right to another faith by the same spirit to another gift of healing by the same spirit to another the working of the miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another different kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues all for what for the edification of the church for the edification of the church in ephesians paul speaks about something else more in romans he speaks about something else more he talks about the apostles he talks about the prophets he talks about the evangelists he talks about the teachers where are the apostles where are the pastors where are the teachers in the body solunga where in the body in the body right it's easy to tell these things in a general way in the body of christ globally i'm telling you locally local church you you are part of that amen you are part of that calling are you listening how come i i i shared it in the tamil service two weeks back stephen how come he was able to operate like this If you read in Acts chapter 6 I believe it's Acts chapter 6 huh what was the problem in the church food problem okay they 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 need to raise up first time they're doing until that while you know it was only the apostles only the apostles so the problem came to the apostles you know there is a problem in serving food to the widows to the grecian widows right huh there is problem so what shall we do the apostle didn't say okay right we will stand he said no our calling is to pray and preach the word we are committed to this we need to spend time here chuma vandha edha kadha uttu po mudiyadu prasangam you know it's this so for that church you raise faithful people what kind of people in that list is full of spirit full of faith good testimony are you listening are you listening and sometimes you will not understand when pastor chooses chooses a person as a pastor i'm telling 
என்ன பாஸ்டர் வெக்கம் இல்லாமல் சொல்கிறீங்க பரவாயில்ல நானே சொல்கிறேன் யூ மைட் நாட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் யூ மைட் சீ த அவுட் சைட் இவ்வளோ டேலண்ட் இருக்கு இருக்கு சம்டைம் பீப்புள் ஆஃப் சார் அவர் பீப்புள் ஆஃப் பாஸ்டர் ஐ திங்க் யூ கேன் அலோ திஸ் பிரதர் டு ப்ரே கம் ஆன் ஐ நோ ஐ எம் நாட் டெலிங் ஐ நோ லெட் காட் டெல் மீ லெட் மீ சி வாட் ஐ வாண்ட் டு சி ரைட் அக்கார்டிங் டு ஹியூமன் விஸ்டம் we see a lot of other things right but here huh, to serve in the church first qualification is full of faith full of spirit and good testimony the amazing thing is if you read further you will understand stephen he was doing that and signs and miracles and wonders happened through whom through whom stephen right sadhana believer than avaru he was not part of the apostles or even the leadership team there they did not have at that time chosen to serve but that man amazing thing if you read further you will understand he was called pulled and he was surrounded by scholars scholars bible scholars they are shooting questions against him the way this person he would have been about 32 years that's what they say 28 to 32 years some say even younger than that i don't know standing there and responding to that argument they were not able to argue with him with regard to the word are you listening and then in the, in the final moment of the pressure that he was going through what did they see they saw god's glory upon his face nada ani tamil series la sonna namakku konjam yethi yethi uttaanga na moonje eppadi irukum paakkante illaya eppadi nammudaiya saayil maarudhu tamil la solvanga agathin alagu so ullugula that man you know we say you no know, when when we are put into fire the more we were put in our face changes because something is disturbing us inside but stephen he was standing there you know we we are talking about like jesus right i tell you i see exactly the same thing on stephen he died like jesus and at that dying moment he prayed like Jesus what stuff he had inside amazing amen it's all about believing the the the, the first okay that the first believers they just believed they just took it like just like that it was a problem only to the religious people those are the ones who were a big pain for whom paul and the church right இத பண்ணாத அத பண்ணாத இது பண்ணாத அப்படி பேசு இப்படி நட தீஸ் பீப்புள் தே ஜஸ்ட் டுக் இட் அண்ட் வாட் வாஸ் ஷோன் அவுட் சைட் இஸ் த கிஃப்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி ஸ்பிரிட் சி வென் யூ சே யூ நோ வென் ஐ சே லைக் ஜீசஸ் யூ கேன் சி எவ்ரி கிஃப்ட் ஆப்ரேட்டட் யூ நோ இன் த மினிஸ்ட்ரி ஆஃப் ஜீசஸ் எவ்ரி கிஃப்ட் வி ஆர் நாட் கோயிங் டு டாக் அபவுட் தட் if you are interested you know we can have a study on the gifts of the spirit why so that i can learn better of what is inside of me so that i can operate in a better and effective way are you listening if you read uh, not just nine gifts that's a problem is you no know, we get stuck with the nine gifts or we get get stuck in that one thing called tongues sister was telling la vibrating okay did you understand what she was telling vibrating she was not looking for a vibrating church thank god adikin jeevan illama sabaya irukoda adu you know we get stuck in the nine gifts or that one gift you know tongues that's the problem here so paul is telling hey have an understanding of what god has given if you read the list which paul you know brings forth as gifts been given to the body of christ there are almost 19 to 21 gifts prophecy service teaching exhortation 
giving leading word of knowledge word of wisdom faith healing miracles discerning of spirits tongues interpretation of tongues apostleship helping is a gift administration is a gift evangelism pastoring pastoring and shepherding pastoring and teaching it all goes together all these gifts god has given to the body of christ you who are seated here amen it is all 100% connected to the holy spirit i was amazed when i read the uh, you know read, read read an example of a person who is a um, who is a professor in a college right educated has the knowledge has experience but when it comes to church his gifting is not teaching did you get it nam eppadi calculate pannuvom anga professor na inge vandu kilichiruvaru ella theyunu some might have i'm not telling it will not be his gifting was not teaching it seems in that particular church it was something else serving are you listening so how will you know when you walk in close relationship with your god you will be able to understand amen paul finishes this chapter like this 1 corinthians 12 verse 31 but earnestly desire the best gifts and it i show you a more excellent way he talks about love but is he is provoking the church a earnestly desire for the best gifts now you know the purpose for which god has given you at least one gift it is for the building of the church for my brothers and sisters to be a blessing in the body of christ right so he's telling earnestly desire in chapter 14 in verse 1 pursue love and desire so that full bible was you know we need to read the entire some people you know they say hey all those things are not in love 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 after teaching about love the next verse the next chapter the first verse pursue love and desire especially that you may prophecy prophecy na le etna perku bayam bay problem la kai thukuna thukka matinga theriyum enakku because it was abused right that was a problem just because it was abused you know god does not want you to play a safe game that's how god spoke to me i'm telling you you know couple of years back that's how god spoke you don't know then you are not of any use for my kingdom that's what he said it was abused all these things you see it was abused that's the work of the enemy either we will fall for it or will totally stand against it that's the problem here there was a problem you know in in the church so he is dealing with that he is not telling no don't prophesy he is not only he is not telling here don't speak in tongues he says do that but do that for that purpose do this for this purpose are you listening and chapter 14 in verse uh, 12 even so you since you are zealous for spiritual gifts let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel verse 39 therefore brethren desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speaking with tongues so what does he tell here desire earnestly desire every believer 
if you are a follower of jesus christ okay right and if you want to live for god if you want to be a blessing to his kingdom god tells you with your human strength it's not possible so i'm not telling you get out no i've given you my spirit i've given you my spirit the holy spirit has been deposited in you for what purpose to excel say what to excel how many of you want to excel in whatever god has given you it might be sports it might be music okay it might be creativity okay it might be preaching teaching it might be singing god wants you to excel go to that place where you are a blessing we are not called for survival mode church epdia survive panni innu varsha odidom adutha varsha odidom kudumbatha odidom velaya odidom no god wants you to excel how many of you believe that you know according to your need according to your calling he has given you a gift how many of you believe that men according to but paul is telling a desire nothing wrong he's telling desire for the best how many of you want to be the best for the lord desire you have the word you have the spirit get out of that place of fear tappu pani romo get out of that place of fear if you have fear it's not from god it's from devil god does not give a, give a spirit of fear god gives spirit of power love and sound mind you get from the word you get from the spirit of god just believing in him let's pray all that god wants you to do today is just believe it desire hunger for god seek him so where i need to focus i need to focus on my life my walk with the lord avudanaga you might say yes pastor i believe the word says you are telling that i need to serve the lord i have a ministry i have a work in the church i have a part to play more than just coming and attending more than that and for that and you are telling the word says that i've been equipped empowered by the spirit and the spirit is in me hallelujah the spirit is in me the first step you know what but she need to believe you need to believe believe that you are a child of god the spirit of god is in you then you need to desire you need to desire. somebody else cannot desire for you hallelujah don't expect for god to send it and send a third person to tell you hey you have been gifted by this you already heard today right if you not heard today god might send you tell him lord i desire you have the desire you need to seek pray ask your father tell him lord i want to be a blessing i want to be a blessing to the kingdom of god i want to be the be a blessing to the body of christ i want to be a blessing lord i pray let the rivers of the living water let it flow from my innermost being as you walk in close relationship with god as you come to a place where your relationship with god is very intimate hallelujah as as you start hearing his voice hallelujah it all happens in your prayer room in your time with the lord 
no need for you to do something special about that daily genuine time with the lord hallelujah church god wants us to rise up to this level to show forth christ to the world live like jesus like jesus that is god's desire towards you like jesus hallelujah just 3 and 1/2 years what an impact our lord has made the entire world is talking about this even after 2000 years that's the kind of life that you are called to live open your mouth and pray pray as how the lord leads you pray as how the lord leads you jesus lord i pray lord i pray this entire house your lord people here in this place we start believing in your word forgetting about the past forgetting about what people have spoken into their lives hallelujah thank you lord forgetting about yes to god the mistakes and start believing and start believing in your word the same spirit if the same spirit is in each and every one here hallelujah the same spirit which was upon paul which was upon peter is upon me let them believe oh god hallelujah